<laughs> this is on. <laughs> I'm Flip. Welcome, welcome to Tulsa on Facts. <laughs> Short facts. Short facts. Not long ones. There are a lot of long ones, though. We could talk for hours, I would say that, which we do on the podcast and the other YouTubes. Yes. The last one was hour and 38 minutes. Yes. So listen to it and watch it on YouTube. You learn a lot, but it takes a lot. Subscribe. Of time. Oh, I should pay attention. Hi. <laughs> so what was the question? Oh, the question today is, uh, what are some of, uh, what were the jobs that Dolson had in his life? Oh, <laughs> My mom and my grandmother, you know, they were funny because they used to say, you know, like kiddingly, that Tosan never worked a day in his life. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> but that's not true. But, yeah. I mean, you know, working for the people and the, all the things he did was major, major job. But actual working, like uh, when he was a kid, he, uh, they, you know, they grew up on that Todong Island in the Todong River, yeah. but it was a farming village. Right. And also he was a, a sheep herder. So, a sheep herder. Yeah, you know, so he wasn't from no rich family and um, not upper middle class. Do you know how many sheep he had? Or? Four and a half. Oh, really? That's it? Four and a half sheep? <laughs> yeah, one was Four a mixed half sheep. half sheep, half goat. <laughs> okay. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know how many sheep. Whatever, you know, I whatever. I see. You know, whatever word or number in Korean registers to be an official uh, herd of sheep. That's what he was doing. <laughs> and then uh, um, he worked at, uh, what is it? Chejong one, the medical place that was uh, at Yonsei that became Severance later, the oh. one of the first hospitals in Korea, and this is in the 1890s because when he was at uh, Kusei Hakdong, Save the World School, the Presbyterian Mission School that became Yonsei University, um, the uh, students worked as they call medicine boys, so yeah. they would hand out medicine to the patients and you know go around the hospital and oh. do that kind of stuff. Uh, and then, uh, I don't know what else he did after that. Because then he became an activist. Oh, he became a teacher. Right. You know, that's his job. He opened up a school. Yeah. He opened the first co-educational school in Korea. Yes. And so, uh, and that was, you know, that's where he got his business sense. I mean, he always had business sense for some reason. Well, opening up his own school. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then also the, what do you call it? The Nevius method. Yes. Because in Presbyterian Missionary, the Nevius method taught that uh, uh, creating a financial arm of the congregation was important to support the church and to do that. So uh, then after that, um, he opened the labor agency in San Francisco. He was a houseboy, you know, a, a, a servant, a house servant. And then he um, picked oranges for a little bit. Uh, the orange thing is way blown up. He didn't do, he was, you know, when he was in Riverside, um, those p pictures, you know, like this painting behind me? Yeah, the painting right here. Those were uh, uh, advertising pictures for the new Korea to get other people to pick oranges. Ah. He was in charge of the irrigation ditch. Ah. So, and I think he wanted to know more about that because that was more beneficial to Korea because, you know, at that time you couldn't grow citrus in Korea, but they needed irrigation. You know, he had a, also a, yeah. uh, Land reclamation project in mm -hmm. Korea, you know, at Taesung School, and um, mm -hmm. he opened up a newspaper in 1905. He started the first newspaper, so I guess he was a editor, publisher. Sure. And um, trade association. Yeah, leader? they had the, uh, the North ginseng. American Industrial. Oh, that yeah, the the ginseng thing. He was just like a advisor to oh, the ginseng okay. merchants and said, you know, um, by having a a co-op, um, he developed an area where they could all sell their ginseng and make money instead of being so competitive against each other. Yeah, and fighting in the streets. Yeah, that was the other thing. Yeah, that's <laughs> a funny. That's another uh, quick fact or a long story. And then, uh, what other jobs? Did he well, running the provisional government. I guess if you call it a job to become a, a political leader, that's what he did. But. I don't think he got paid very much. He never got paid much. Right. And so, you know, like, that was the funny thing, because my grandmother was always working. Yeah. I mean, working as a farm, a migrant farm laborer, washing clothes, cleaning houses, cooking, you know, all those kinds of jobs. And so uh, that's why they would laugh, because she basically supported Tosan. You know, uh, I mean, a lot of people gave him money to do what he did, but as far as the family, my grandmother raising five kids by herself, pretty much. Wow. And, uh... Then uh, um, giving money to Tosun while he was traveling or when he came back and forth, and so uh, so his job was to spend Helen's money. 
There you go. That's pretty much it. You know, so and she was a good wife and a good patriot. So thank you, Helen. Yeah, without my grandmother, Tosa would have never amounted or accomplished what he did. There's no way. I mean, she was as big a patriot as him. Yeah. So that's thank you, it. Helen. Thanks, Grandma. So thank you, everyone, and join us more for Tosa Facts. Bye. Bye.